we're going to start setting up the digital twin here and there is a significant advantage to doing this upstream of the machine. You get better quality code, better confidence, maybe the programmer is different than the operator, maybe he's in a different building. This gives you the capability to do a lot more and a lot less at the machine because you don't have to mess with rapid moves. If you've got a large production run, you want to trim out every second of that program. Uh, having all of this information upstream so the programmer can visualize what's happening is key. So let's get started with setting up the machine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and come to the machine setup icon here under the home. We're going to click on that and we're going to go ahead and select a machine. So I'm going to come here and pick a Nakamura. And the machine will appear and you see everything that is built into the machine setup. Looking at the masks tab here, you can scroll very quickly this bar on the left upward and turn off the machine, you know, different portions of the, these top icons for um, the part, the stock, tools, etc. We don't have any of that yet, but very quickly we can turn things on or off. Additionally, uh, there's an icon right here that I can toggle things on or off. So if I want to turn off the turret but leave the machine, I don't need to use this. I can just come here and click on that, or I can come and make the machine somewhat transparent so I can see through the sheet metal. So you have a lot of control over how uh, the visibility of the machine is going to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at now setting up the machine. So we're going to come here and we just have the machine listed. So we're going to come and say, let's add a fixture. Of course, this is a lathe. So we want to uh, bring in some sort of a uh, chucking product. So we're going to come here and I'm just going to pick uh, one of these that I have. We see here, this is a collet style. Chuck, I'm going to say OK. And if I say OK again, uh, we see that now added to the machine setup. So again, if I scroll this up, that's going to be controlled with that. So let's go ahead and set up the actual part. So we need to add the workpiece to the machine. So we want to highlight this component and click on workpiece. And when we do that, the workpiece is going to appear, and this collet chuck was saved out where the workpiece attachment point was at the face of the chuck, it looks like. So we have that hundred thousandths <clears throat> uh, solid, uh, sorry, stock distance on that face. So we see it protruding just slightly out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to kind of uh, uh, set this so that my my stock is, let's say it's uh, six inches out from the face of the chuck. And this gives me the ability to control a little bit better where I'm at in space. I can see, uh, you know, the, the chuck face here as well as the back of the stock. So I can pick the back of the stock and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and I'm gonna hold the middle mouse wheel kind of turn my view a little bit and holding control still, I'm going to pick this face. And I wanna show that if I go ahead and do alignment mating here at the center icon under the mating section, it will snap the back of the stock to the face of the chuck. So you have some mating commands that work with the simulation solids. This is a very nice feature inside of Esprit. So now if I want to come in here and look at this and say, you know, I want to shift this about an inch backward, you know, I can do that. Or maybe a, <clears throat> a half inch or so, so that I can turn this diameter with a little bit of clearance to come up to the face of this chuck. So I'm going to say, well, let's try uh, 3.5. So I'm basically shifting it back in there and that looks pretty good. So uh, this looks good. I'm going to say OK and say OK again, and that is going to be placed inside of the machine. So now I can see my workpiece, uh, my stock, my workpiece inside of the chuck where I want it located on the machine. So basically, uh, you know, if 
we did make a mistake earlier where the work piece itself was not aligned along Z. Uh, we can rotate things here. We, we don't want to do that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do this just to show for illustrative purposes here. We can put in rotational angles if we want right there and correct those things here. So additionally, um, F4 on your keyboard, F4 is going to give you that lathe view, the XZ lathe view. So if I'm in some uh, weird view here and I hit the F4 key on my keyboard, I'll basically get that view that I'm accustomed to uh, in the older version of Esprit. So this is lathe. We're centered about the Z axis, which is the machine axis. Both the Z in Esprit and the Z on the machine are now the same. And the Z, X, or X, Z axis is controlled, or the view for that is controlled with the F4 keyboard command. So I'm just going to say OK. And we now have the machine. And again, you can toggle between the simulation view and the part view this way. One other thing is if you have a secondary monitor, you can come here to basically uh, disconnect my machine view from my part view. And you can't see this in the video, but if I drag this off the screen, I now have that on a separate screen and I can bring it back to uh, you know this one and just double click it to make it full view or embed it so that I can control it by clicking on this little icon again on the top left of the graphics area. So depending on how uh, you have your workstation set up, if you have a secondary monitor, you might want to go ahead and detach this from the uh, embedded view and drag this to a sec secondary monitor and uh, have that so that both the part and the simulation view are displayed simultaneously.